Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the select board meeting. It's November 14th, 2022 at 615. Uh, this meeting has been warned in three places. It has been posted on our website and it has been emailed to the very long list of people, interested parties. <laughs> we are operating on Zoom. Um, we ask comments to stay at a three minute length. Um, but then if there's further conversation, you can have another three minutes. So um, that's set in place. We're going to be looking at the prior minutes from our select board meeting that was on October 24th, 2022. I have read them over. Um, I have uh, uh, two typos. And um, instead of pursuit, it would be pursue. <laughs> And then build design documents should be document. And Frank, at the very bottom of page one, if you print it out, it just says about, it should say about. Okay. <laughs> That's it for your English lesson today. Thank you. <laughs> so I propose that we accept these uh, meeting minutes with the corrections. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And they are ready to be posted. We do have guests, and because we're on Zoom and some might be on the phone, do you want to state your name? Starting with me? Yes. Sure, we always Harvey. start with our guests. And do you want to be on the agenda for a specific reason? Just visiting. Awesome. <laughs> we like that. Come anytime. I have no agenda. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to our new business. And um, the select board members that are here tonight are uh, have reviewed the treasurer's report. Um, this is uh, a formality that um, our auditors want us to take a look at it. So we're publicly stating that we are looking at the treasurer's report. We are not quite halfway through the year. Um, but from my point of view, um, we are on target. Some are a little over, some are a little under, so I think it averages out to about 40-something percent. Um, I also recommend that we bring this treasurer report with us to the Budget and Finance Committee. It's a useful tool for them as well. So if you want to go ahead and say that we did a review of the treasurer's report, sure, we can accept it. I accept the Treasury's report as we reviewed. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have formally reviewed the Treasury's report. Um, number two on our new business agenda has, um, we're going to kind of skip over that. Um, our committee member, our select board member, Dune, um, is in the process of taking care of that, investigating that, looking into the FEMA compliance certificate. So um, we're going to skip over the, to that. We're not sure if it's completed or not. We'll wait for Dune to give us those details next time around. I think he signed Actually, that paper in yes. there. It's due so, on Thursday. So I think, right. I think so. he's all set because he signed that form that's in there. Yep. In okay. The file. He so. just needed some photos to send to me, and then I could file it all Thursday. Done deal. Yep. Done deal. Uh, number three on our list is uh, the Brookfield Generator Maintenance Contract. Um, there are two maintenance contracts. One is for the generator here at the town office, and the other one is for the generator that is located down at the school that serves the shelter. Um, we have some proposals to look at. Um, we are making our decisions and signing that contract tonight. Yeah. Yep. And we are we going are to just right here, Pat. You got them. Yeah. That's what the the school and the town office. The town office is three eighty three, and the school would be six seventy three. And that is the as best and final paid. offer for what it's going to cost us. Those are for services for one time for one per year. year. One, one year, year, one time, once a year. Um, which is referred to on the contract as Program 1. Um, 
So um, I move that we do sign these and accept these contracts for a one-year period for a once-a-year maintenance program. Um, do you want to second that? Yeah, for the year 2023. Yes. Yeah. All in favor? All right. All right. So we can go ahead and sign that. And the cost of that is $1,056 for the year for those two. For the two of them. feel compelled to circle the one we want, but I will let you do that. Julie can fire that in. That's one. Or did we have? <clears throat> yeah, only, we're gonna have to put the, a new. Only the office will be new, but I think they covered it under both. Emergency the generator. The school was in there already. The school covered. is under emergency school's generator, generator maintenance. It is okay. So I almost feel like they could both because they're both emergency. They should be together. Yeah, we okay. could probably yeah. put them both together. Okay. I think we need to look at in the future to do all of them. At but once. it's only one year anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. But, I mean, you get them all at the same time. There's, what, fire department's got two, right? And water and sewer's got one. So we've got, two, yeah. we've got so five in all. We've got five in all. Seems like they could talk halfway decent price. Right. Because right. right. they do them all in a day. Do them all in a day. Yeah, there was discussion about yeah. bundling. Well, that's a, something we'll need to look into, okay. I think, in the future. This is kind of a quick new thing. Well, we're working on 24 now. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we should resolve it. We should at some point quickly. Number four on our list for this evening, we do have a driveway permit request. Um, this comes from uh, Keith and Joanne Mills uh, that have property on Quarry Hill Road. Uh, they are looking to put in a culvert um, between the road and their driveway. Um, we are laying our eyes on this. Um, we are pretty much secondary. We're going to be handing this over to John Champion to look over. And once he gives his blessing, then we can sign off on that. Um, there's a, a small map on the side. So um, once we have that, so we're going to pass this off to the highway department. And um, it'll probably circle back around to us so that we can actually approve it. And that might be in uh, hopefully our next meeting. I'll get that to John. You want it? Yeah. Just leave it in the file. Yeah, I see Brookfield Service wrapped around it too. Yeah. <laughs> we need your copy. <laughs> Um, we did have an issue that was resolved that was on our agenda. Um, the West Young Drive that is uh, up Bethel Mountain Roadways. Um, there was an issue with some uh, landowner uh, utilizing the right of way for the town trucks to turn around. Um, so the town uh, highway department was asking perhaps if they could clean that area up. Um, Frank has been addressing it. It is uh, just about all completed, and we anticipate the possibility of there not being a problem. There's still a little bit more to go. Um, if we get the snow that they're talking about on Wednesday, I guess we'll know for sure how that, how that <laughs> turned out. <laughs> so uh, we're forwarding that one as well. Number six on our agenda is approved water sewer truck use increase um, in doing uh, reviews for personnel, town personnel. Um, I um, took it upon myself to offer uh, a larger stipend to our utility operator for the use of his truck. 
Um, he, it's not just uh, wandering around town. It's bringing water samples down to Lebanon, um, going for parts all around the state. And uh, we all know that the price of fuel is a lot higher. So um, I suggested that we increase the stipend um, to $65 per department per month. And therefore, um, no, per, per, per select, board. select board meeting. OK, good. Each so select board meeting Perfect. twice per month. Perfect. Um, and so we wanted to make that a public statement. Um, so I propose that uh, we approve that increase in stipend. The $15 per meeting per it's, month, uh, twice a month. Is that what it is? It's for it's it's ten. 10 per. Ten per. It went from fifty-five to sixty-five. Oh, okay. Ten, ten, twice One, a week. One hundred and ten to one hundred and thirty okay. each, okay. each yep. time. You okay. want to second that? I do. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. We have a hand up on Zoom. Go ahead, Martha. You're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, Patty. Um, could you repeat this briefly uh, i have down that you said you felt the truck that who is this it's the town's our own water and sewer truck you're saying no it is the truck that personally belongs to terry severy and he uses his vehicle when he's maintaining the water and sewer system and everything that surrounds that so um he gets a stipend for that he has for quite a long time and so we're increasing it because the cost of fuel is so much higher than it was the last time. So you know, we said on you felt that Terry Savory's water sewer truck um, um, should be um, the stipend for that use should be revised um, fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars per. I'm confused. Ten. Sorry, my phone is ringing, but I can't reach it because if I answer it, sorry. Go ahead. $10 for water, $10 for sewer department. $10 per department per, per um, twice per month? Correct. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that. No, it's fine. I just want to make sure I got it correct and I don't always hear as well. I apologize. Thank you. Okay, do we have anybody here from the library? That's a no. Nope, nobody on Zoom either. We did have a letter from them. Right. There's a letter. Um, Requesting that we yes. do the... Let's see, I think it went by uh, back up again. It's somewhere right in there. Yeah, I already read it too. Right there. There it is. Shall I read the letter? No, they're just worried about the exterior painting, the first floor windows, and the, and the roof and leak. the roof leak, which we're addressing at times. And Jeff is looking into it, and I've also had conversations, and we're moving in a direction towards addressing these issues okay so we recognize the uh the trustees of the rochester public library's uh message to us that was dated autumn of 2022 and we are once again going to try very hard to work with them to get these things repaired and buttoned up the other issue we have with the library is we receive uh some uh, notice from our insurance company about the library of things and what the ramifications are about setting that up and and what kind of insurance liability it taxes on the town and I think a further discussion on the board's part and with our insurance company is in order on that because I think we need to make a decision on whether or not that should be allowed um, through our insurance. I know they have a waiver issue there, but even with a waiver, I'm not sure that the liability is enough to protect the town on that. So I think we need to have a discussion 
addressing that in the future on whether that's a permitted use or not for that building. It might be wise for them to also contact other towns because this is a program that is basically pretty statewide now and uh, see if other towns have gotten extra insurance for uh, the items that they lend right. out. Right. So I, I think we just need to make sure we're okay. Highway Department, Frank. Yeah, um, John's just been doing the repairs and hauling some sand in the downtime, um, getting ready for whatever storm's coming. Um, we have had conversations with uh, um, going forward with the grant stuff that we got coming up, and he's planning on attending the meeting with uh, uh, Rita and uh, Cricket and the two girls here, Julie and Kristen and myself, and John's going to attend too to see if we can't get a handle on the grant system coming up. And that's on Thursday at 10 o'clock. Oh, Friday. Friday. Or Friday. Yep. Friday at 10 o'clock? Okay. Sorry. Phew. Your Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> My Thursday. <laughs> okay. I got to remember that. Uh, I've had it on Thursday all the time. Okay. We did have some feedback about from the partnership about the uh, waste stormwater system that was installed at the uh, town garage. We haven't seen an as built until we do. We're not going to deal with it. And I think that there's a lady coming from the partnership on that meeting on Friday also, but I'm not positive. I thought there was another name on that. There is another name. Christian Pelletier. Yeah. No, no, no. no, there's some lady from the White River Partnership, I think, uh -huh. coming, and I'm going to have, we're going to have a pretty good discussion about that coming up due to the cost of long term maintenance of that stuff. Well, right. And one of the notes that's here, it's a handwritten note. Right. That's my stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, and that'll be addressed Friday if, if she shows up. But we don't have an as built, and we haven't signed any papers because of that. And I requested the We're as built. Still not signing the papers. Not until we get an as built. And, and that, then would, we and that would come from it. the engineer. That's that uh, was called. I called engineer. Kristen from the, engineer. Okay. the partnership, and he said he'd get me one, and I haven't seen it. So we're not signing the papers until we get a chance to look it over. Okay. That's that's a good amount from the highway department oh, and yeah. utilities. So just You're speaking up. about highway department. What about this parking over here to the cafe? You know, this weekend, if you look, there were two pickup trucks with uh, crew cabs on them in longer beds. And Saturday, the cars parked all the way up to where you go up into the church. We've been hard pressed to put a fire truck in between them. You wouldn't have made it by staying in your lane. You couldn't have made the swing. Because of the addition is pushing cars further out into the road. Well, they're four feet or better out in the road. I mean, how can they park like that? I mean, you look at where the handicapped one is, that's a good two feet into the town road. So it's not the addition that's a problem, it's the parking space right. that they've made that's the problem. Who gave them the permission to have them park like that? I mean, you that park lengthways to stay on there. You know, just to stay out of the road. Yeah. But you get a fire over there, you know, and then cars there, it's going to be your guys' mm. liability that they're going to go after, not the fire departments. Because somebody gave them permission to put those lines on there. I don't even know if anybody gave them permission. I don't think so, but I mean, <laughs> I it think needs to be addressed. I think One second, was... Martha. You need to address it. When you're ready, there's a question on Zoom. Martha, what can we answer for you? It was about the parking spaces. I noticed that myself because I, I have to park in a handicapped space because of my walker and everything. And I normally used to park around on the other side next to the ramp facing in. And now it's a different one. And I noticed that those one facing in, the last time I went to the cafe for lunch, there were several. I mean, it was like over parked. And I mean, it's good for them that they've got good business. But 
I didn't know whether they were they um, had chosen to put those there themselves, those spaces, or whether when the highway crew from the state was here, re, you know, painting everything and making lots uh, lines all through town, if maybe they just put them there without asking. I, I don't know. You know, I just wondered did, myself. Did they just do paving there. I think they, Charlie, they didn't. Uh, I, I think Charlie. Uh, Charlie did it. Charlie they, Bowen, they, when they did it, yeah. he has his own. Oh, own, own line. Right, line, right. Line, right. Line, yeah, he so. did the. He did the hard work too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that, that's. They did this. They that's did what's one. creating the extra the, the right. issue. Yeah. But the long pickup trucks, that, yeah. that is a completely joke. Yeah, they they sometimes park right there in front of the church, and they're still out on the road. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there, I, you can get around, but I mean, there, the other day, it had been, like I said, it had been hard pressed to get fire trucks up over the hill. Right. We can, we can see maybe they'll just... Crosses it, through those we, two spots, or... It, they can put signs that only compact cars can park there. I mean, you can no. literally direct what vehicles can park there. Well, no, 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 no. That's, that's something that they'll have to address, and we'll go from there. We'll, ask, we'll talk with them and right. get a handle on it. Yeah, we'll put it on our radar, keep an eye on it, and see what we, where it's going. I mean, it's obviously going to die down a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, it's not going to go but away. But it's going to come back in force next year. It's always an issue so in this town. Out. Parking is always an issue. Okay. Any other utility? information or news or updates uh fire department uh our truck's in over to middlebury and i gotta go over tomorrow to see what they give us for our old truck mm -hmm. with it and they're looking to get paid so i'd like to have you guys give me permission to sign some papers tomorrow well, we've already approved the purchase, so right. I, right. I think we better but do I need, that. I need to have you guys, I mean, the last yes. one I bought is had to go to a meeting, and you guys gave me permission to sign the papers. So, so all, the, all the sale papers. Good. So I'm, I'm moving to give you permission to sign the documents to obtain your new fire truck pickup truck. Right. So good. All in favor. All right. Aye. Our Got body's it. in, but it's Only not being painted. Only one pickup. <laughs> I'll trade mine then. No, no. I could, but it'd be a Ford, and I couldn't do that. Jesus. You couldn't do that. I couldn't live with it. Well, that's good news no, that it's in. How long has it been on order? Ordered it in April. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Eight months. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Do we have Jeff get part? No. Nope. Okay, well, we do have uh, Catherine Shakeman with us. And Catherine, you could be up to bat. Are you going, uh, I did print out the committee status report if you wanted me to read it, or do you want to go through it, or how do you want to proceed? It's completely up to you, Patty. I. I'm here to answer any questions, um, so I can do an overview. I mean, it's three pages, so maybe it's a little lengthy to read, but I can go over the gist of each of the categories. Yeah, let, why don't you do that? We if can I, hear you loud I, and clear. Is everyone here, Catherine, well? Okay. The floor is yours right now, Catherine. Okay. So I'm reporting uh, the most recent developments in the... Uh, Rochester High School Repurposing Committee progress. The project continues to move forward, and as I said in my letter to you, it's not unlike the White River with lots of twists and turns and highs and lows, but we are still going forward. And uh, yesterday, actually, uh, 12 members of the committee were, um, were asked to pose for a photograph, well, the whole committee was asked for, but 12 members showed up to the high school at 11 o'clock and uh, they were photographed by a seven days a photographer to accompany an article uh, by Rachel Hellman that uh, is I believe scheduled to be published in this week's edition 
Uh, she's doing a general story covering the effects of Act 46 across the state and how towns have had to pivot to accommodate closed districts and empty school buildings. And they um, interviewed Vic and I, uh, it was, I think, late August, but maybe it was September. Uh, and the story was put on hold until now. So just an FYI that's supposed to come out. And we, I want to report that uh, there is a, a planning grant um, uh, fund balance. Uh, Sarah Wright uh, sent a, she submitted a requisition uh, most recently and said that um, the state will be depositing a reimbursement into the savings account that the town set up specifically for this planning grant. And that within 10 days, the town will need to transfer the money into the town's general fund. Uh, and then Sarah has to submit documentation that that money was transferred on time. Mm -hmm. And according to her invoices on file, it looks like we've spent of the $50,000, $33,523.55. And uh, the, uh, Two Rivers uh, uh, Administrative Services will charge an extra uh, uh, $1,691 to the grant, leaving us with a fund balance of $14,785.04 that the committee does intend to use towards uh, the fees for a project manager. She cautions us that that number could be made smaller if any future Dubois and King invoices that have not been received come in. So <clears throat> once we receive a confirmed project manager uh, fee proposal, we will then apply to ACCD for the $10,000 extension on our current planning uh, grant, which Nathan Cleveland has already approved, but a requirement to submit is to have the actual bill. So the environmental assessment um, occurred uh, last week of October. There were two uh, consultants appointed by two rivers uh, down at the school to do the brownfields and hazardous materials review. We have not yet received those final reports, but as soon as we get them, um, we'll make them public. The um, historical preservation has yet to approve uh, our preliminary review form that was submitted in late August, I believe, that would give us a waiver from the archeological and historical review. They are waiting also just to know the degree of ground disturbance that expects to happen. Uh, we know that there is an underground 10,000 gallon underground uh, fuel tank and there will be some ground disturbance related to that. But I'm waiting for the full report to know the extent of the ground dis disturbance. And I think that's real, they really need to know that whether the tank is going to be physically removed or whether some other means for uh, decommissioning it will be used. So as soon as we get those reports, we'll be able to respond to them. Um, and Sarah has said that if necessary, the development of a work plan for phase two, which would be testing, uh, would also include maps of exactly where the test pits will, will be dug. So all of that will be coming through pretty soon. Um, I submitted along with my uh, written report um, the draft of the Brella application and the notice of application that would have to be uh, uh, put out by the town, um, all from Sarah Wright. Um, the, the application still requires uh, some more information as well as attachments of a deed and feas the feasibility study. Uh, and so I am asking that somebody, uh, that a town representative work with me to finish this application sooner than later and get it in. Uh, it's very important that we do get it in if we want the state, the Two Rivers funding and their funding is quickly diminishing. So, but there are other, other uh, departments, they expect that their funding will be um, updated and there are other departments with funding for this. So that's, I don't foresee any kind of problem. Um, Dick Ro about the floodway issue, Dick Robson has reported that Dubois King has completed the elevation survey and Dick has requested that Andy Randy, excuse me, Otis, who is the head surveyor of Dubois King, provide a map showing the subdivision boundaries superimposed on the FEMA map. Randy responded that he would provide this map, but he did not say when we can expect to receive it. And Dick has requested this three different times. 
and says he will continue to press Randy for it. Um, I've asked him to uh, copy more people on those requests so that Randy understands that he's not just dialoguing between Dick and himself, but that other people, I mean, we need it. We need this to go forward. So, um, so Vic distributed uh, the project manager proposal, um, and um, we have not received any committed uh, responses. We did receive responses, uh, and most of those folks said that the project, as we have described it in the RFP, is so complex uh, <laughs> that they just couldn't submit. So we're, we're circling back, we're revising that proposal. Uh, we've had several meetings with people, especially um, Liz Curry and Tom Appel. Uh, Tom Appel has offered uh, free of charge to help us revise it. We're going to break it down and do it in phases. Um, and we have met with Mariah North from the Ver Vermont Rural Economic Development Initiative called Ready about applying for additional grant writing funds. We received an email confirmation today that Ready is willing to pay for a consultant to suggest fundraising opportunities for the project. And today I got an email from a grant writer and principal of the third sector associate by the name of Diane Meyerhoff, who is it, who reached out to work with us, paid for by Ready Funds. Um, that will basically help us create a funding map, which we need. And Liz Curry, who is a seasoned project manager um, and a um, grant writer uh, with interest in the project and interest in the town of Rochester, has introduced us to uh, the federal new markets and tax credit program based in the U.S. Treasury Department. This program targets community development projects in low-income census tracts, and where the building is located qualifies for that. Um, so, it, the census, um, so this is a complicated financial and legal program, but there is a statewide nonprofit real estate development corporation called Evernorth, which guides its applicants through the process and finds investors as limited partners who receive tax credits for their participation. And, and Vic and I are going to be meeting with Liz to learn more about it. And Patty, if you want to, if you're interested in jumping in on that meeting, let us know. Um, so we met with Eric Law from the USDA uh, Community Facilities. I'm just going to refresh anybody who doesn't quite remember that uh, when Senator Sanders uh, funded uh, our, our project. Uh, he funded it through one of the only two available accounts uh, for construction, and that was the USDA community facilities. We did not qualify for the health care account. And out of the 16 USDA projects that he submitted, only two were approved. But as his office promised, USDA circled back to work with us, and Eric Law uh, came to tour the building on October 20th, and he spent quite a bit of time with us after the tour as well, uh, really bringing us up to speed on the next steps that uh, we would have to take uh, for grant eligibility. Uh, and the, the pri one of the primary steps on that is to have the preliminary architectural report. And I've notified our tenants of that. Speaking of our tenants, um, the um, child care uh, folks, which they've, um, they formed a nonprofit called the Next Generation Child Care, um, they redid their survey that was done in the beginning part of this uh, project development, and the number of families who need and want child care have virtually doubled, and uh, also the regulations for child care are now 35 square feet per child. So they have recently toured the building with the fire marshal and are going to get back to us with his report. But Greg Gossens and Dick Robson met uh, with them to talk about the feasibility of literally isolating the rooms identified for child care from the rest of the building, heating them through a heat pump. And, uh, and we've been told by the architects that that child care could then go in sooner than later and they would not be disturbed with any kind of future construction or change if we set it up this way. So we now have to 
you know, really sort of see whether this is a feasible idea. We'll talk with the, uh, with Jamie and the school board, et cetera. But it's, it, it, I've been told by every single person that we have worked with and talked to that child care is absolutely essential in economic development. You can't even separate them. And so this is a very important piece for the, for the future of Rochester and the Quintown area where there is very little child care options right now. So let's see. Um, uh, building heat. Okay, so at the end of September, a task force was created uh, that is composed of members of the, the school district uh, and uh, our committee, as well as representation from both Stockbridge and Rochester select boards. Uh, and um, one of the, the RSUD uh, uh, member, Bill Edgerton, had proposed a three-legged strategy that would divide the funding responsibility into three different sources. And this committee is one of those sources. Uh, we have launched a fundraising campaign that um, that has had different levels. Um, we are uh, Mitch Scanlon is developing a monthly calendar of events. We have now gotten uh, an appeal letter out to the, or it drafted. It's been printed and everything. It'll go out tomorrow. Um, uh, Patty's going to do that um, to the uh, alumni uh, and. So things are going. We're doing the best we can to raise what we can towards that. Each group uh, is hoping target to raise twenty-two thousand each. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, and I think that about sums it up. Any questions? Are you still with me? Yes, yes. we are. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm 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 with you. Okay, well, so sorry it wasn't a shorter report, but um, we've, been, we've had a lot of work. We continue to work extensively on this. You've been busy. Mm -hmm. A lot. Did you want to drop off that mailing at the hardware store? I was going to bring it to you tonight. At the, at the end of the meeting, I'll just come oh, to the parking okay. lot if you don't mind. Yeah, come on over. Um, Mark I will. Okay, Martha has a question. I didn't say actually, no, I just wanted to say thank you to Catherine and to Vic in absence, et cetera, all the people on the committee for their hard work. I mean, it's taken you a long time and you're still not you know, done yet, of course, but um, it's a lot of work, but I think it's an important thing you're doing and thank you. And it also gives thank a you. lot of good transparency to the town. Anybody that's interested in how that is all going, we can refer them right to this meeting. So thank you for that monthly in, input and update. Sure. Mm -hmm. awesome. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Is there any other business? Things are quiet on Zoom. Going once, going twice. Looks good still here. Shall we adjourn? Yeah. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. All right, Patty. Oh. I'll, I'll be right over.